The Curio Shop by William Kotzwinkle Now here, sir, is a lovely, and might I say, traditional example. The seller pointed a finger at the decorative sphere, set against a velvet background cloth. The collector leaned on the edge of the counter and studied the bauble. Its workmanship might be good, but it was hard to tell, owing to large, sooty stains on its surface and, beneath that, what appeared to be rust or some fatal corrosion that had permanently marred the interior. I'll let you have it cheap, said the seller, spying the critical look of the collector. Business wasn't good. The shop was seldom visited any more. Is it? The collector touched at it with his monocle, studying the piece more closely. Still enchanted? The occasional wail, sir. You know the phenomenon, I'm sure. The true spirit, or merely an echo? The seller sighed. He couldn't misrepresent the piece. He'd like to, naturally. He needed the sale, but he couldn't afford to offend an important customer. It no longer contains a true spirit, sir, I regret to say. The collector nodded, turning the trinket slightly with the edge of his monocle. But, the seller continued, a trifle urgently, the echo is authentic, sir. I'm sure, said the collector with a sideways glance, his eyes showing only a momentary flicker of contempt. Well, sir, said the seller, defending himself against the glance, there are clever copies in existence. The ordinary collector can be deceived. Not that you, sir, he hastened to correct himself, are an ordinary collector. Happy that you think so. The collector turned the ball in his hands, examining the portions of the surface not corrupted by time and bad handling. It was shameful the way certain pieces deteriorated, but the work was authentic. He didn't need the seller to tell him that. You could see the little original touches all over the object, though they were badly encrusted. Unfortunately, you couldn't clean the damn things, no matter how you worked at them. Once the corrosion began, it couldn't be reversed. He wondered sometimes why he bothered with them at all. But then, it was always amusing when company came and one had a new piece to show. He could have it put in a gold mount, that'd show it off to better advantage, or hang it from a chain in his study, where the lighting was usually muted and the defects of the sphere wouldn't show too badly. Let me, please, sir. The seller pulled out a cloth from his pocket, attempted to shine the tiny patch of transparency on the ball. But as the cloth touched it, the wailing came forth, long, low, and chilling. Echo or not, it went right through the seller's soul. The echo is fresh, said the collector, smiling for the first time. The spirit must have departed only recently. So I'm told, sir. The seller resumed his bit of dusting on the surface, more confident now, for he'd seen the smile and knew he had a sale. That's precisely what the caravan master said when I bought it from him, sir. The spirit has but recently departed. The collector squinted through his glass, savoring the moment, knowing the piece must be his, for the whale was strong. He could listen to it at his leisure and learn the story of the bauble, who had made it and when. All that would still be in the echo. Pity the true spirit had fled. That would have been a find. Well, I suppose I'll have to have this, he said. My wife will hate it, of course. Because of the wailing, sir? Puts her off. Gives her the creeps. The seller continued his dusting. I must admit, it gives me the creeps, too. You don't know how to listen, the collector said. You must get past the superficial sound and hear the traces of its inner voice. You have the knack for it, sir. That's clear. The seller masked his own contempt behind a cheerful smile. He'd be glad to have the cursed thing out of the shop and be done with its bloody wailing. Much to be learned, much, said the collector, aware that he was revealing too great an excitement and knowing he'd suffer in the bargain. But he didn't care at this point. The wailing had thrilled him. These little ornaments were always filled with surprises, even when they were as old as this one, and all that remained of their glory was a fading echo. Microbes, he said, inspecting the ball with his glass again. They say that's what causes the deterioration. I've heard the same, sir. Tiny organisms that feed upon the workings. Once it was brand new, the collector said, holding the ball up to the light. Can we ever conceive of the beauty it must have contained? How splendid its workmanship was? If the spirit that once inhabited this ball were still present, it could tell us more than just who made it and when. He paused, his eyes shining with the intoxication of the connoisseur. It would engage us in deep discussion, whisper to us of the wondrous workings of its mechanisms, give us the secret of its maker. It would grant us, in short, the favor of its enchanting company. But, he placed the ball back on its dark velvet cloth, this is a lifeless trinket now. The seller concealed a sneer behind his polishing cloth. These collectors were such pompous old bores. Listening to their twaddle made him sick. You saw my sale sign, sir. 50% off all items in the shop. 
Yes, said the collector, disappointed at his failure to kindle true appreciation in the cellar. But what did these merchants know of subtlety? And in any case, once he was home and visitors came, then he could expand fully. Then he'd have his fun in the comfort of his armchair in the study, with the fire crackling and the bauble suspended on a suitable chain, in the shadows by the window, perhaps. All right, how much do you want for it? As you can see, sir, through this bit of transparency, the center is filled with jewels. But surely that's not unusual. The fakes, sir, are glass-filled. The collector adjusted his top hat, turned up the collar on his cape. The bauble was in his pocket, and a thin smile played upon his lips. He'd driven a hard and cunning bargain. The seller graciously held the door, sly satisfaction in his eyes. He'd gotten twice what the trinket was worth. These foreign collectors often think they know it all. Do you remember, perchance, asked the collector, drawing the sphere from his pocket as he stepped into the bright street, what the caravan master called this thing when he sold it to you? A peculiar name, sir, replied the seller. He called it Earth. Earth, I see. Very well then, my good man. I shall undoubtedly visit you again. My pleasure, sir, always. The seller closed his door and watched as the collector walked on down the glittering, milky boulevard.